Hi, this is Payana and welcome to my video. Um, today I'm going to be telling you about Onyx and Ivory by Mindy Arnott. And I just want to start by saying how beautiful this hardcover book is. It's just so brilliant. I don't know if you can see, but the, the cover is matte, but the lettering of the title is glossy and the like the name of the author it's got this lovely golden uh print it's really lovely there are these lovely like illustrate oh, lovely illustrations at the beginning and yes this cute little thing this is the like a little note here signed by the author it's a sticker i don't know where i'm gonna put it yet but that was really that was a really cute thing i thought so yes and the cover the covers just the cover art's just amazing this is a scene in the book and it's just so beautifully done i love it so much so just aesthetically i'm very pleased to own this so this book follows the story of kate who is a courier she works for a courier service which is essentially a postal service it's their job to relay post between various cities and they do this on horseback and she is a magic she has magical powers whereby she can communicate with the minds of animals and so she has this very particular fondness for horses and she can communicate with her horse uh, through her mind which is quite pleasing she is the daughter of a traitor a man who tried to kill the king of this kingdom he was master of horse to the king and one day he went into his chambers in the morning and stabbed him and he was sentenced to death for it the king survived but his mental health was somewhat lacking afterwards so Kate is, she tried to kind of start a new life, but failed because people recognised her after her face was published in various newspapers. So she is known as Traitor Kate, and she isn't very well liked in her work. There's a character who's always kind of bullying her for being the traitor's daughter. She has a couple of friends called Bonner and I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce her other friend's name Sing or I'm gonna say Sing her name is Sing uh, so Sing's a courier and Bonner is a blacksmith who also has magical abilities he can control metals and one day when she comes back from work uh, the prince of this kingdom so the king's son arrives on a visit uh, in the city where she's based and she is really terrified to meet him because they used to know each other they used to be friends but her father nearly assassinated his father so not very good terms she doesn't really want to see him but she does end up seeing him and thus the intrigue begins i was a bit worried at the beginning because there were a few passages especially when uh kate first sees the prince prince corwin she starts having all these kind of flashbacks at what their life was was together and how much she loved him and they, they were friends and blah, 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 blah. and he then you kind of see the story from corwin's point of view and he's pretty much the same and I was just thinking no no please I don't want it to be this cringy romance with two characters who used to kind of be in love but never admitted their feelings and still won't admit their feelings to each other and there were there were some very cringy passages at the beginning like this one Kate glanced back her gaze on Corwin, he was as handsome as ever, with his dusky blonde hair and a tanned face chiselled by the gods, each angle and plane designed to complement each other, from the high cheekbones to the angular jaw, all except for his nose, which was more crooked than she remembered. 
and a thin white scar across his chin. The source of these injuries was a mystery no one had solved. The newspapers out of Nordgard had nicknamed him the Errant Prince. Thanks to the way he had vanished for nearly two years, he'd returned some few months ago with wild speculations as to where he'd been and what he'd done. To Kate's dismay, the scars only added to his attractiveness. Damn him. And at that point I was thinking, be afraid. Be very afraid. But thankfully... All of that pretty much disappears in part two, at which point everything gets way more exciting. The kingdom is plagued by these creatures called night drakes, which are sort of um, reptile-like creatures, I think, kind of halfway between a crocodile and a dragon. That's how I imagine them anyway. They have these kind of weird stunted wings. They can't fly, um, but they come out only at night and they eat humans or anything human related like anything that has the scent of humans on them like cattle or horses and so they're a very big problem and the the book actually opens with Kate galloping back towards the city at nightfall because she is terrified of the drakes and her horse is injured and so it's not going as fast as she'd like and she desperately needs to get back before nightfall and the night drakes come out so I like that kind of, th this idea of these monsters that come out at night because in history, like in medieval times, before we had electricity basically and street lights, people were terrified of the dark and they genuinely did think that there were monsters at night, that there were demons running wild on the earth, that there were witches all evil came out in the darkness so people would lock themselves inside their homes and just pray and having insomnia in medieval times i imagine wasn't fun at all it's not fun now but back then yeah now we can get up at night and do stuff or read a book but back then it was just pitch black and then one day while kate is out doing her job she comes across a bunch of night drakes only in the daytime and they look a bit different. They're not like dusky grey like the nighttime ones. They are black and they can walk in daylight. So they are the day drakes who've just appeared seemingly out of nowhere. Her friend Bonner, the blacksmith, created a revolver for her. And that's an aspect of this novel that I also liked. It has a kind of steampunk side to it. Um, because they have pistols that only fire one shot and Bonner creates a revolver that can fire six shots which is completely new and he can only do this because he has the ability, uh, the magical ability to control metals. The problem is the magic people are divided. There are the mages who work for the kingdom, who sell spells and sell their services and work for the king but there are the Wilders, they're known as Wilders with wild magic like Kate and Bonner who control the elements or can, who can control minds and they are outlawed. So Kate and Bonner have to keep their abilities secret. Only uh, the Daydrakes that Kate comes across uh, on the road are attacking the prince's caravan and she steps in with her revolver and kills the drakes and saves the prince. So she is she goes from being traitor Kate to saviour Kate. Not that that changes anything for the rest of the kingdom. But uh, for Prince Corwin it changes a lot. She saves his life. And Corwin is obviously very quick to note that she killed a drake with this fantastic pistol that fires multiple shots. And so he offers to Bonner and Singh, who is the one who creates the powder for the revolvers, uh, which only she knows how to do, and also Kate to come back to the castle and create the revolvers for everyone else. Only they need to keep their magic hidden or they will be dragged away and tortured and killed. There are also a lot of questions surrounding Kate's father and the attempted murder that he 
carried out on the king why did he do this because no one actually knows she doesn't know her father never explained why he'd done this and so she tries to also to find that out to get in touch with the people her father was uh, working with back then to try and find out what was going on and it gets big it gets very big and i really appreciated that about this novel the kind of multiple layers and all the intrigues and the way they unpack and kind of go off in their different directions because they need to find out who or like what what the daydrakes are where they're coming from they're suspecting um a kind of revolution from the people with wilder magic only kate has wilder magic and so does her friend so they need to keep that secret and find out why her father tried to murder the king and what's going on in conspiracies and blah blah blah, blah. so yeah and i love novels that are like that that have multiple kind of storylines all spiraling off uh this way and that so i really did appreciate that it was a I thought it was a brilliant novel. I really enjoyed it, despite the cringy bits at the beginning um between Kate and uh, and Corwin. Um their relationship kind of grows and gets m more interesting and I felt like cuz at, at the beginning I thought they were probably going to build on the friendship that they'd had before uh the attempted assassination. But that's not what happens. They kind of create a new relationship as adults because they are adults um when the assassination attempt happened it was three years before when they were 16 and now they're 19 and so they they've moved on with their lives and they've both lived things uh, in that time um which gave them more experience so that was interesting just how the, the kind of growth of these characters and um you've also got the the kind of ongoing rivalry between Corwin and his brother Edwin for the throne because now the new king is about to you know be selected and this is selected through a succession of trials and these two princes hate each other well Edwin certainly hates Corwin because uh, they were basically rivals and Corwin was favoured by the king when he was younger not so much now but um so there's this kind of uh, interesting sibling rivalry going on i thought the magic was interesting like the the magic system with how all the different kind of powers they they usually have kind of elemental powers apart from kate who's got kind of the power to influence the minds of animals and later on human beings but uh you've also got the mages the the, the kind of magic that they use isn't entirely clear because they create spells and they can kind of infuse stones and sort of elements with their magic and create protection spells or all kinds of stuff but one of the mages kind of explains this but it's not gone into in in a lot of depth and i thought that was a shame but i suppose it's kind of hard to there was already a lot of stuff going on in this novel, so I guess it's a bit complicated to sort of pack all of that stuff in. Um, I met, there's a second novel, so I'm hoping maybe they'll go into it in more depth. In that one, we shall see. Um, the horses also had a very big place in this novel. Mindy Arnett apparently lives on a farm with horses. There she is with a quite a stunning black horse there. Uh, so she clearly ha she clearly knows a lot about horses like whoever wrote this it's written in a very uh, horse loving way and the horses are very very important to, to these people's worlds which is nice I like horses I have two ponies I've always been obsessed with equine creatures so that was nice and pleasing so yes uh, in conclusion started off a bit cringy but later on turned into a very 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 good fantasy novel which i thoroughly enjoyed and i'm really looking forward to reading book two so yes that was onyx and ivory by mindy arnett so that's it from me i hope you enjoyed my video i will be coming back soon for the third book in the temeraire series which i'm completely obsessed with 
please leave me a comment and tell me what you thought if you've read this novel did you enjoy it have you read the second novel is it any good just tell me what you think and yeah don't please comment please subscribe please give me a like give me a share and i will see you all soon thank you so much for watching bye bye <laughs>